factor each polynomial completely. If not factorable, write a product. So remember when we start these, we need to look and see um, what kind of factoring it is. And when we take a look at this first one, we're always asking ourselves, do we have a greatest common factor? And it appears that we have a greatest common factor. If we look between x cubed and x squared, it's going to be the smallest exponent, which is x squared. And when we factor that out, then we need to see what remains here. We had three x's. We took out two of them, so we have one. And then we had two x's. We took them out, so we don't have any more x's, but we still have the eight. And again, just as a reminder there, that's the greatest common factor. That's all we can do on that pro problem. But as we start with our factoring, we should always ask ourselves, do we have a greatest common factor? And on the second problem, again, we do have a greatest common factor. If you notice, between 2 and 40 and 200, those are all even numbers, we can factor out a 2. So we've got a greatest common factor, as uh, at least for starters. So if we factor out a 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, x squared. 40 divided by 2 is 20x, and 200 divided by 2 is 100. Well, not only do we need to do greatest common factor, but it turns out that we can also do split the middle. So I'm going to squeeze that in there, split the middle. And when we split the middle, it's going to be the number in front of the x squared, which is 1, has 100. So 1 times 100 is 100. And the factors of 100 are 1 and 100, 2 and 50, 4 and 25, 5 and 20, and 10 and 10. So we need to find which factors combine. That means either add or subtract to be 20, and 10 and 10 is what it's going to do. And in fact, it's going to have to be negative 10 and negative 10. So we have this 2 out there, which I'm going to leave. I'm going to put in brackets, use parentheses if you prefer. And then it's going to be x squared minus 10x minus 10x. Again, remember we split the middle. There's the middle. We split it. And now what's going to happen is we're going to uh, factor the greatest common factor out of that. We still have the 2 here greatest common factor is x, the lowest exponent. We had two x's, we took out one, we still have one. And then 10x divided by x is 10. We had one x, we took it out, we still have the 10. Be careful, there's a minus right there. Greatest common factor between 10 and 100 is 10. And then negative 10x divided by negative 10 is x. Positive 100 divided by negative 10 is negative 10. And now we can finish the problem. We still have this 2. Then we have an x minus 10 and an x minus 10. As we look at problem number 3, it's kind of lost in my other work there. Um, we focused on greatest common factor, split the middle, and difference of squares in the notes. But as you take a look at this one here on problem number 3, uh, what happens is that this one is a grouping problem. So if we look here, we've got one, two, three, four terms. And we're just going to go straight to grouping. Here, the greatest common factor in that first group is an A. And we're left with C plus D. Our greatest common factor, notice how I wrote the plus there for the second group, Greatest common factor in our second group is an x, and then we're left with c plus d. And then what we have is we have a c plus d in the first group, a c plus d in the second group. So that's going to be common. And then a plus x. Reminder that you might have written the problem as a plus x times c plus d. That is okay as well.